Hello, everyone. My name is Lucretia Williams, and I am your CLF Worship Fellow. I am talking to you tonight from the lands of the Peoria, Sauk, Kickapoo, and Potawatomi peoples, also known as Chicago, Illinois, USA. I was born into Pentecostal Christianity at my grandmother's church. And from an early age, the song lyrics and Bible passages that were often repeated became second nature to me, even if I didn't fully understand them as a child. One of the concepts that were often mentioned in the words was this idea of spiritual warfare and battle. The adults around me often refer to themselves as soldiers preparing for battle. When I joined the choir, some of my favorite songs to sing as we were marching in time to the music had lyrics like, I've got my war clothes on and I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. The prayers that were being prayed over my head by the adults were filled with pleas for guidance as they said to the spirit that they were sometimes lost and weary soldiers. And if a new person was worshiping with us, thanks would be given to God for adding another soldier to the ranks that would be needed in times to come. As an eight-year-old, I didn't understand these things. And I wasn't quite sure how to feel because outside of church days, of which there were many in a week, I was taught that fighting was wrong. However, now as an adult, I believe those early worship experiences of which prayer was a part was where I first encountered the concept of spiritual preparedness. The lyrics of the songs and the words of the prayers and the sermons I heard now in my adult mind, I think urged the congregation to be ready for anything, to be ready for whatever the devil would throw at you because in the Pentecostal sense, you were constantly facing an enemy combatant bent on the complete destruction of you and your entire community. Therefore, it was necessary for the congregants to create a spiritual foundation, a spiritual practice in order to fight their battles in their own lives. I believe this early childhood practice of being able to articulate who and what I'm fighting for has given me the ability to acknowledge and prepare for the harm that is being actively committed against myself and my community. In order to fight, one must be prepared and our preparation can take many forms. Beloveds, this is not about wanting to fight or needing to fight or enjoying to fight, but preparing ourselves and our community to withstand whatever what always seems like ever present danger being perpetrated against us. It is instilling in our children the power to be confident in their ability to articulate to us the future that they envision. They, these children, who will then become adults who know how to engage in principled struggle, unafraid to rip it all apart and try something new, to make something new. Preparation can look like prayer, sleeping, 
beloved conversations, crying, having that awkward conversation with your teenager, a self-defense class that you take on Mondays, training your dog to be a well-behaved dog at the dog park, to reaching across the class and age divide present in our congregations to build healthy churches. Through our preparation, our searching within, our learning and growing, we can decolonize. I'll say that again. We can decolonize our minds and hearts to see the real enemies that we must face. It wasn't until 2020 that I realized I could no longer separate my spiritual and physical well being. I had to seek out a spiritual tradition like Unitarian Universalism that was rooted in bringing about heaven on earth now. It's so clear to me now that the war is being waged on so many fronts. And thus our spiritual practice, our preparation will be an ongoing pursuit. These fronts are against all women as our bodily rights are being restricted. This war is being waged on my black and brown community when police red light cameras exist on every corner issuing $200 tickets. The war is against the self-determination of countries like Haiti and Afghanistan that has continued for centuries as punishment for their rebellions. It looks like not defending our children and elderly by not investing in childcare and elder care infrastructure. The war against our young people when education is not free and accessible to all. It's the war against our veterans who are neglected before, during, and after they fight with their bodies. And so, so much more. I know now that if I am to live under these conditions, if we are to live under these conditions, we need fortification, a wellspring of mental and spiritual fortitude to draw from when these reserves are low and we need replenishment, a place to go to, to seek guidance, refuge, consultation, when we aren't sure what our next steps may be. If we fortify our hearts and our minds, I know that our wildest dreams are possible. The late, great Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party said, let me say to you, peace, if you are willing to fight for it. May it be so. Blessed be Ashe.